Hi! It's been a month since my last devlog, so here's the next. I got tons of new models and a lot of progress on the game itself. I'll start with the stuff in Blender, then move over into Unreal Engine, some slight changes to the design of the game, and finally, what's next. I'll be making sure to explain some of what I've learned, but if you're not here for that, feel free to skip to the slightly more interesting stuff. Alright, so first up is the Molten Bloom Cactus. This was just a small model I made for fun, as you can see I made four different versions, just to see which looked best. I'm still not sure, you can tell me in the comments. I'm leaning towards some of the design aspects from the one on the left, uh, but maybe with some other changes from the one on the right, because I like how the uh, the stems or whatever, the, the roots are um, staggered, like in their height. I like that. Um, but overall, I, I think this is a nice design, and it'll just be a, a plant that you can harvest these thorns from as a fruit in the game. Alright, then here's the design I whipped up for the flare in the game. I think it's a neat little design, I like the, the suns, and I, I think it, it fits with the vibe of all the, the tech in the game. So yeah, this is the flare, just a simple little model. But now onto the cool stuff, I've modeled all of the raw materials in the game. And so by that I mean like minerals, like all the different types of rocks. So I've modeled all of them, and there's only like, I don't know, 10 of them or something. And they're, they're pretty simple, but I learned a lot of really interesting stuff, which I'll talk about as we get through these. But first off, we got manganese. If you want to look up what manganese looks like, I promise you it lo looks sort of like this. It's a very weird looking rock. Then here we got the diamond. And then here's gold, which obviously I made entirely differently than the other rocks. It's actually alluvial gold, which is the, the gold dust at the bottom of rivers. Uh, I'm planning on having this spawn at the bottom of tide pools, so you have to look out for them. But yeah, here it is. I'll link in the description the uh, glitter tutorial I used to make this, because glitter looks pretty similar to how this gold dust should look. Um, but yeah, then here's the ruby, which I'm not a huge fan of, so I, I might change it in the future. But at this point, I do want to say that the only way I was able to make any of these rocks was by watching this incredible tutorial on how to make stylized rocks in Blender, so I'm going to link that in the description, definitely check it out. And I was able to use a lot of the tips to make these crystals, because they weren't in the tutorial. But yeah, it was a great tutorial, and um, I, I, I'm in debt to them, because these these rocks would have taken me ages to make. Then here's Kaolin, which is this type of clay. It looks kind of weird here, but in-game it doesn't look as odd. It's just hard because of the rendering mode I have to be in to show this off at cycles, but when I export to Unreal Engine it looks a lot better. But here it is. Then we got emeralds. Sapphires. Then here's lead, and you'll notice that I gave it a couple of these, not a couple, a lot of these purple uh, specks on it. And this is mainly just to differentiate from other metals in the game, because I have a lot of gray materials and I don't want them to be uh, easily confused. And also, since we're on an alien planet, it's pretty easy to excuse that like, lead just looks like this, because I don't know, copper or something. Whenever I look up why does a certain mineral look different than it should normally, it's always because of copper. Like, purple gold, that's because of copper, it's weird. And here's cobalt. And at this point, I'd like to go over some of the different techniques that I used to make these that I, I found from the tutorial. So first off, just to go over a simple thing, the way I made this cobalt have that um, bumpy uh, look to it, like it, it looks 3D, is by using normal maps. Which I think I've probably talked about before. Normal maps are the way that you trick the engine into thinking something has depth when it doesn't, it's just flat. Um, and so you can see here, that I'm, I'm taking the result of some of the um, uh, nodes that are creating the texture and I'm putting them into what's called a, a bump node and this is producing a normal so if I, I take this off you'll see that it goes away and it looks a lot flatter so that's just a neat little effect but then I'm not going to try and explain all this because even I don't really know what's going on with this whole um, shader thing with all these nodes but basically uh, a lot of this texture is being created through noise that's being like clamped and changed through different like colors and being mixed together and through this you're able to create these really organic looking textures obviously this is very stylistic but still and then the the um, edges are created through ambient inclusion I'm not sure how this works but ambient inclusion I don't know what that line is um, you can see it looks really weird if I take that off but um what ambient inclusion does here is we we get the color and then we clamp a certain value because if we change that then you'll see it gets a, a bit more faded but we clamp it to a very specific value and we, we use this as the factor for these other colors to be mixed with um, the color we want the outline to be so if we change that you'll see the, the, the outline will change and so it's this really fun system where you can create um, rocks really easily but then to create the models for specifically the um, the rock part not the, the gems at the top or whatever you call them this is created using a Voronoi texture. So you'll see here I, I'm using this displacement modifier, and then if I go over to the texture it's using, 
it's this Voronoi texture, which is a texture that creates these like, uh, these like cell looking um, noise textures. And so we can use this and set the distance squared and we can just change the intensity and you can see the difference that creates already. But just by changing stuff like the size, we can make completely different rocks just like that. And then I have to like click it again for it to register. But yeah, it's super interesting. And you can modify these values to create really unique looking rocks. And then another thing you can do is modify the um, strength and mid-level. And so, I mean, the, the, the possibilities with this are so limitless. It's really fun to mess around with and create unique looking rocks. Um, and you'll see some of these, like this looks a lot like the aluminum I made. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. And if I set this up, you can see we create something similar to the manganese I showed earlier. Just a really neat effect. So definitely try that out if you ever want to have fun in Blender. And then after that, or before that, we use subdivision so we get some more um, uh, vertexes to work with. Because otherwise it's very blocky. Or I guess very smooth because we have shade smooth on. But you get the idea. And then here is silver which I gave a slight, maybe not slight, but I gave it a pink hue to it so it looked different as well. I think this one's a bit off looking so again I'll definitely change probably most of these if not all of them but here's what I have so far. Then here's iron which I think looks really good compared to the other ones. Um, originally I had a lot more of these iron specks coming off of it but it ended up looking very busy especially when you're mainly going to be seeing this in the inventory and stuff or just like on the ground. You don't need to have a ton of these specks to make it look really realistic but here's the rock. Now this one is my favorite this is bauxite. Definitely look up a picture of bauxite. It doesn't look exactly like this, but I think this is just the most appealing rock to look at I've ever seen. And I am so excited to show you guys this within Unreal Engine. But here it is. And this was again made with the same technique of using the Voronoi texture. I just set the strength uh, really high. Um, but you can see I can even set it higher and it just goes crazy. Alright, then lastly, I have modeled all of the electronics for the game. That only leaves... Um, basic and advanced materials. So I'm getting through all the different models I have to do pretty quickly. Still have to do the creatures and stuff and that'll take a lot of time but I I'm making progress. And so here's the capacitor and this will be like the most basic electronic you can craft in the game. All the electronics are designed by the, the company in the game Solerna so they all have the yellow, red, orange color scheme with a bit of white or black and maybe blue. So here you go. Then here's the microchip design. As you can see, it has this little sun-looking icon at the top because it's Solerna, solar technology, all that stuff. But yeah, this one's pretty simple. Then here's the flux clamper, which is literally just a voltage regulator, but I wanted to give it a, a more interesting name. Uh, as you can see, it has the same color scheme where you go from this black to yellow, orange, red, and then you have the metal bits on the ends. And then this is something I call the Exo Adaptive Interface. This is not a real thing. This does not exist in real life. But I wanted to come up with a couple like weird sci-fi things. Um, so the idea of these is that they, they kind of like, um, I don't know, latch into different uh, technologies and they allow them to communicate with other things or allow you to control them in certain ways. And so that's what these little prongs do. You kind of like push it into the machine or when the machine's being built, it gets pushed in like that. Um, and as you can see, it has this like blue stripe around it to give it a bit of unique color. And these are kind of like buttons you could press theoretically, but in game, I don't think you'll be doing that. All right, then lastly, we got the solar board. Now this one I'm really proud of. I think I did a really good job, especially for being new to Blender and all this type of stuff. Um, but yeah, so this is a solar board, which is literally just a circuit board that looks cooler. And I have a whole like lore reason on why it's expensive and because this is the most expensive electronic in the game. But here it is. And as you can see, we have some other electronics on it. Like you got the capacitors and you got the microchips. So, and those are both part of the recipe for it, so it makes a bit of sense. And you can see I add some, like, uh, metal bits, like, I don't know, is this solder or whatever? Um, and then you can see at the bottom it has more. Um, when I was little, I used to take electronics off of circuit boards. Um, I don't know if this is called solder or not, but I remember you solder to get the pieces off. Anyways, here it is, and as you can see, it's got this little sun design in the center, and you have all the, uh, like, yellow bits going into the different um, uh, edges of it. So there it is. And those are all the electronics in the game, and I earlier showed off all the different raw materials, and the Molten Bloom Cactus. So, that's a pretty good amount of, um, of new models. Hope you guys like that. Now let's get into the stuff in Unreal Engine. Alright, so first up, as you can see, all of these assets that I just showed you have been imported into Unreal Engine. Not the electronics, I haven't gone to that yet, but I learned a lot of interesting stuff about importing from Blender to Unreal. Before, I had no idea how to import um, textures, really. 
especially textures that I made using the shader editor instead of just ones that I made using texture paint. So there's a really cool thing you can do in Blender where you can bake any sort of textures you made through shading. So if all of these were made through shading, so I just took that texture, or the shading texture, baked it into an image, and then I can take the image and import it into Unreal, and if everything's right, I can get a, a, a material that looks exactly the same like it does normally. So that's really cool, and um, I'll link in the description a video on how to um, bake textures. But here you go. So another cool thing I want to show you is that now, as, as you can see, the, those are also the straw pods that I showed off in like one of the first devlogs. I've imported them too. So I can go over to the crafting menu now. As you can see, there's a flashlight. If I craft it, it uses up the resources now, which is already pretty cool. Um, and I'll show off the flashlight in a second because it can do stuff now. Um, but then also, another thing I want to show off is that if I grab any of these resources, let's say the, the bauxite, it's in my inventory now, and if I drop it, it'll move around. Uh, if you hit it, it kind of glitches out a bit sometimes. Well, here it's looking fine, but if I, like, I jump on top of it, it gets a bit wacky sometimes, but um, there it is. So now when you drop resources, they'll uh, actually simulate physics, which is pretty neat. And then also they'll despawn after like 30 seconds. So there's that. I've also fixed a bunch of glitches, but I know no one cares about that too much. Another thing I've done is add the flare. I showed you them all before, but you can, you can actually uh, craft it now. So if I go over to this manganese, I'm sorry, the day and night cycle is very fast. Um, but yeah, that'll be fixed. This is just a temporary. But anyways, if I grab some manganese, as you can see, I can like move it around and stuff. If I grab that, bring it here, I can craft flares. And you'll see it gives me two of them instead of just one. So that's another thing the system can do. So now that I have these flares, I can go over to anywhere in the environment. Just like, let's say, on top of this platform. And I can drop it, and it'll give off light. And you, it moves around too. Um, and this one isn't that janky either. There you go, look at that. I can drop the other one as well. So yeah, flares have been added. Oh, there you go, you see, you see some of the jank there. But anyways, we got flares working. And now to show off the flashlight, and this is pretty cool. This took a lot of time to get working and it's still very, very um, janky. This is just, I, I'm learning all of this for the first time, just to, to be clear. But now, if I, are to, if I were to move over on the hotbar to the flashlight, it goes into your hand. See that? And it moves around. It doesn't really move around with the hand itself. I think it's moving with the arm, so it kind of collides with the hand in a weird way, so that'll obviously be changed. But if I click Q now, I can turn it on. And if I were to get off this hotbar slot, it goes away. Look at that. So, I don't know. I, I'm learning, and I think this is pretty cool, and I'm making a lot of progress, so I hope some, some of you guys find this interesting, but yeah, now we have a tool working. Alright, so as I mentioned, the first thing I'm going to do is make it so the flashlight actually lines to the hand. Uh, but that's that's first off, but I also want to make it so that I can animate the default player model, because right now it's always stuck in this like trigger hand, because I just don't know how to animate it yet. And that's a whole new realm of stuff, so that'll be really interesting to learn, probably take a bit, but anyways. Um, I do want to show you, this is what the model looks like right now, so it's just these two arms, you see that, holding the flashlight. And as you can see, it's stuck in that like gun hand shape. So yeah, I will be learning how to make that change and maybe make like a walking animation, all that type of stuff. I also want to make the cable deployer fully functional. You might remember this from the last devlog, but uh, right now it can just take you down onto the surface, but can't bring you back up. I want to make that work so I can actually make it so the player can go up and down to their base. At that point, it's a lot easier to develop stuff like the map, which I also want to do. And yeah. From that point, I'll either, start working on the, I'll either start working on the map or the building system. Both of those will probably take a lot of time, so hopefully the next devlog can come out in a month, but we'll see. Um, but that is the plan. I might not get most of that stuff done by the next devlog, but I'm going to try, and I'm going to continue to update you guys with the progress. So, that's all I got for this devlog. If you have any feedback on how I can improve these videos or the game, please tell me because I have no idea what I'm doing. Alright, we'll see you in the next one. Bye!